Next, let's try typing some fractions. About two-thirds of the glass is full. Now this is just text mode. So if I build, if you recall that a line break in the code doesn't necessarily correspond to a line break in the output, if I wanted about two-thirds of the glass is full on a separate line, I would have to insert an extra line break in my code. So I can build that. Okay, um, About two-thirds of the glass is full. So I am displaying the fraction two-thirds, but I want it to look more like um, a fraction where we have the numerator, a horizontal bar, and then our denominator. So let's try putting the two-thirds in math mode and see what happens. When I build that, nothing changes. Okay, so there is a special command to type a fraction, and it's not just the forward slash. To type a fraction, I want backslash frac, and then we need a set of curly brackets for the numerator and a set of curly brackets for the denominator. So inside the first set of curly brackets, I'll type 2, that's my numerator, and inside the second set of curly brackets I type 3, that's my denominator. Notice that I didn't have to type a slash at all to get that fraction bar in there. It's built into the code. So now we see about two-thirds of the glass is full. Now because I typed that in inline math mode, uh, you may notice that it kind of shrunk the fraction. It doesn't look as large as some of the other math notation that we've been typing, uh, and that's to make it fit in line better. We may or may not want to do that. If it's too hard to read, because if it's, got, if it's shrunk down so small that it's hard to read, uh, we can work around that. I don't want to go to display math mode, because that would put two-thirds on a separate line, and then continue the rest of my text on a third line, which will just look silly. So I want to make it larger instead. And I do that with a command called display style. So everything I want displayed larger, I wrap with the command display style. Backslash, display style, and then in curly brackets, I wrap what I want displayed larger. So let's build that. And we can see the two-thirds now is the normal size for what we would get with our just using our math notation in our normal math mode. Let's try a few more complicated fractions. How about a fraction with x in the numerator and x squared plus x plus 1 in the denominator? So I'll put this in display math mode. And as I start to type the command for fraction, um, I can just hit enter to complete that. And then I just fill in my numerator. It's already highlighted uh, the dot, so I can just type over that. I just wanted x in my numerator. Now, I can use my mouse to go to the next set of curly brackets and type over that dot, or I can just hit tab. That makes it a little bit easier. And I want to put x squared plus x plus 1 in for my denominator. And then I want to close math mode see how that displays. Nice. Let's try a fraction with uh, square roots. So we'll do backslash frac. In my numerator I want the square root of x plus 1. So backslash square root of x plus 1 and the nice thing about letting the program fill in the empty command for me is that I know I'm always going to have the right amount of brackets. Every time you have an opening bracket, you need to have a match, matching closed bracket, or you're going to get an error when you try and build your file. Okay, so right now I'm um, in the, den the set of curly brackets that represent the denominator. So in the denominator, I want to put the square root of x minus 1. So backslash square root. Again, I can type this myself or I can choose it from the list here and get all of my brackets automatically inserted for me. It's much easier to do that. x minus 1. And then comm
come out of math mode and let's see if we did that correctly. Good, so we have square root of x plus 1 in the, our numerator, square root of x minus 1 in our denominator. Let's try a fraction within a fraction. So I do slash frac and we're going to do 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. So in my numerator I just need a 1 and then I can tab over. In my denominator I need 1 plus and now I want the fraction 1 over x. So backslash frac and 1 over x. So 1 in the numerator, tab over, x in the denominator. And we'll build that. Now I'm almost at the bottom of the page. This number 1 here is the page number 1 and I can see that I'm almost towards the bottom there. So sometimes um, the document will automatically ad ad resize things so that you don't have something tiny on the next page all by itself. So that might happen or it might just push us over into page 2. We'll see what happens when we build. Okay, it did change the spacing of the document slightly to accommodate um, for this extra bit of text that we have here. So we have our fraction 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Let's try one more. We'll put a fraction inside of a square root. So we'll start with our square root. And I'm going to put the fraction x over x squared plus x plus 1. So I need a fraction. Numerator is x, tap over. Denominator is x squared plus x plus 1. Now this did push us over to page 2. So here's the end of page 1 and now we're on page 2. So square root of the fraction x over x squared plus x plus 1. That concludes our tutorial on commonly used mathematical notation in LaTeX.